Okay, what we have here is a Leader LSG-17 uh, RF generator, and it generates frequencies from uh, about 100 kilohertz up to uh, about 150 megahertz with some overtones available up to 450, some harmonics. Um, it uh, also is a, has an internal modulator, so you can get a modulated signal. It'll allow you to do external modulation. Comes with a, a high and low attenuator switch and a uh, constantly variable fine attenuator. Um, we cover the frequencies in six bands. Has a very nice geared um, vernier tuning dial. And uh, it's a nice shape. Uh, it's a nice clean case. Um, it did have some markings on it. Uh, most of it I was able to clean off, but uh, under just the right light, I don't, yeah, you can see the number uh, 964 uh, in a faded kind of color. You don't see it so well on this side. And also on the, uh, the front, there's a uh, uh, 964 in, the, in a light silver metallic color here, but uh, Outside of that, it's in it's in remarkably clean shape. Got a nice shiny um, uh, face plate. Uh, see if I can catch some of the light here. No scratches. No scratches on the front panel, with exception of right in the area where the writing was. There's a light scratch where somebody tried to take the uh, 964 off. It wasn't me, but uh, they weren't successful and they gave up. Um, it also has a crystal calibration port or uh, a checking port. You can put a crystal in here and it'll uh, put the crystal into an oscillator and you'll be able to observe the waveforms of the crystal uh, harmonics uh, showing up in the waveform. So you're sort of testing the crystal and I imagine probably can generate some marker frequencies that way too. But what we're going to do now is we're going to run this thing through a quick test. Uh, we're going to take it through all of its ranges, sweep it through all the frequencies, and we're going to show you the output, which is right now being displayed on this oscilloscope. I'll back away so you'll be able to see both controls happening. And then simultaneously, uh, I, I am displaying the frequency, so I'll be coming up here to show you the frequency relative to the dial. Right now we're at the extreme lower end of the, of the frequency range on band A. At the lowest point on the attenuator and we are reading 99.245 or 5. There's some uh, in the hundredths of a uh, of a hertz area where uh, uh, we're unstable but uh, at the tenth of a hertz we're doing or tenth of a kilohertz excuse me we're doing just fine. So um, let's go ahead and uh, and sweep this thing through. Starting at the 99 uh, kilohertz point, let's uh, let's take her up to about mid band. We're gonna sweep it up. 150 on the dial, and I am reading 152.2 on my uh, digital meter. Uh, let's go ahead and take her up, sweeping towards. Uh, sweeping towards the um, 300 kilohertz point, which would be right about here. All right. Okay, we are on uh, band B at the lowest uh, frequency on band B. We're running below uh, 300 kilohertz uh, right now, actually 297.6. And we're going to rotate uh, up to uh, about mid-range, which uh, in this case would be um, oh, 300, about 500 kilohertz. So let's take ourselves up. Watch the frequency as I go up. Okay. That looks to be uh, about... I'm sorry, uh, 300 kilohertz, I need to read right about there. All right, we are uh, running about 510.8 uh, for the 500 on the dial. So 
in that uh, range. And then we're going to take her up, watch the frequency. Taking her up to um, a kilohertz, uh, a megahertz, excuse me. All right. And there's our megahertz right in there. We're running 1.002 megahertz. And then we take her up to the maximum of the range, and that's it. And we are running 1.04 megahertz. So we've got a little bit of overlap. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take ourselves back down. And we'll go to the next band. On C here, we are running, running 1 megahertz to 3.5 megahertz. We've now progressed to this outer band of ranges. We are running right now uh, at the lowest end of the scale, 958.3 kilohertz. And let's go ahead and take ourselves up to about mid-band, which would be... Oh, uh, let's take us up to 2. All right, uh, that would be about two on the vernier. And we are running 2.026 megahertz. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and advance our range here so you can see the uh, waveform a little bit better. Okay, here we go. Let's take ourselves on up to uh, maximum of this range, uh, which would be um, and C would be uh, on the vernier would be 3.5, and that is running 3.506, and then up to the maximum of the of the band, and we are running 4.149. So you can get up to 4 megahertz on this band. Let's go to band D, run ourselves back down here. All right, we are on band D at the minimum. And we are at the minimum, we are running uh, 2.884 megahertz. Uh, this band runs 3 megahertz to 11. So uh, let's go ahead and take ourselves up to mid band, which would be about 5. It is on the vernier at 5, and we are reading 5.08 megahertz. So the vernier is accurate there. And then taking ourselves up to 11 on the vernier, we are reading 11.38 megahertz. And then let's go ahead and max out. And we, uh, we max out at 12.16. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more gain and let's raise up our range, okay? Make it easy to see. Well, we are now going to band E. Take ourselves down. All right. We are on band E, which runs uh, 10 megacycles to 35 megacycles. We are at the minimum of the scale, and that's coming up as 9.796 or 9.8 megacycles. Let's go ahead and take ourselves up to uh, mid range of this particular band, which would we'll call it uh, 20 megacycles. And on the vernier, that appears to be 20, and we are running. 20.38 megacycles. Okay, watch the frequency. I'll take her up to uh, uh, 35. A little bit of distortion in there at some some point where it's not quite as efficient as it could be. But let's. Uh, there's 35. And uh, 35 megacycles on band E, and we are running 35.15 on the frequency counter. Uh, we can take ourselves up a hair here. All right. The attenuator actually took care of some of that distortion. Um, take her all the way up to the maximum. And we are running 40.89 
at maximum of the scale. All right, we're going to go to band F, the last band. All right, we're at the low end of band F, and we are running 30.34 megacycles. I'm going to go ahead and remove the, um, the counter because the counter is loading this uh, at, at this point. And we're going to go ahead and uh, take ourselves up, watch the, the uh, frequency as I go up to mid-band, which uh, I'm going to call mid-band here, um, well, we're going to say 32 to um, 40, 50, 60. We'll call it 60. All right, and watch the cycles, uh, frequency. Try it. You see this? There's 60 mega cycles on the vernier as I make it. Um, and let's go ahead and connect up the frequency counter for a moment. And there we go, we got 60.1 mega cycles and we are looking good. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to remove this once again. And run us up to the um, 150 megacycle limit here, as rated on the. Uh, there we go. And let's go ahead. Am I up all the way? I am up all the way. Okay. So there's 150 megacycles on a 100 megacycle scope. So of course we've lost some gain. The scope can't display it even. I can, um, I should be able to get a little, there we go. Waveform still looks good. I've multiplied times 10 now. We are at uh, 150 mega cycles. Let's uh, go ahead and, and check it out. 150, right about there. It's running 145.4. I did it by eye. Let's see, we can get, uh, we'll take her up all the way to the maximum of the range, and that is. 152.1 so we can get 152.1 mega cycles out of this unit so there there we have it that's um we've tested all of the bands from uh, 300 kilocycles up to 150 mega cycles and we're going to go ahead and uh, just demonstrate now internal modulation let's go ahead and Bring ourselves back into a decent range. All right, let's go ahead and uh, show internal modulation. Here we go. It's an example of what internal modulation looks like on the uh, on the scope. Let's see. And we are running right now, um, oh, in this case, I'm running about 2.5 mega cycles. Right about there. And you can see the, uh, the modulated envelope on the upper and lower. Um, believe that to be a one kilohertz modulation according to the panel here and um, if we go to external you don't see a modulated wave internal you see the modulation of the one kilohertz uh, we have inputs for an external modulation if we wanted and once again I don't have a crystal that exactly is meant to work with this but if I there you can see this uh, 100 kilohertz crystal modulating that waveform as well. So, so there you have it. It modulates. Uh, it has great uh, frequency coverage. Uh, it's a very easy to use unit. Uh, got a nice feel to it on the vernier. I like the geared vernier. Very nice. 
It's a beautiful little unit. So we'll include with this uh, leader LSG-17 a uh, nice set of leads just like the ones I'm using. They're brand new. They uh, fit this particular model. Uh, we have five-way binding posts here, so I'm using banana leaded ends, as you see. Uh, they're BNC connect, they're not BNC, excuse me, they're coax connected to um, uh, to these uh, alligator leads. Uh, so you can get the most flexible uh, connections that way. And um, the manual covers uh, all the instructions on how to use the unit and then also includes a um, uh, schematic diagram calibration technique, that sort of thing. There we go. Here's our schematic diagram. Get out of my way. Um, control, circuit design, preparation, connections, modulated carrier, theory, the uh, crystal oscillator output, audio frequency output, Calibration, removal from chassis, and and uh, in the schematic diagram. So, so there you have it. It's a complete package. Thanks for listening.